be great if we could find some very reasonably priced uh, acrylics that we could use to paint our famous paintings with? This is Cheryl Johnson from Art Lessons Now. Since we all have to be home from COVID and this is a time to create, I was given the opportunity by Chalcola to experiment with their acrylics and see if I liked using them and to give an honest and accurate critique of their product. So we're gonna do that today. I'm gonna to open this box and I'm going to explore their acrylic paints and I'm gonna share with you my experience about the pigment quality, the trueness of the color, the viscosity. I'm gonna be uh, creating a painting here today that is gonna be in a new series I walked down the street the other day and went to my neighbors who is so talented with growing beautiful flowers in their gardens. And I shot some close-ups of the flowers and I'm going to be portraying those flowers in this painting. This will be an abstract, not realistic, but it will be using the idea of the flowers. And I'm going to call this series Secret Garden. And I'm going to create the entire painting using Chalcola paints. And I'm going to be portraying those flowers in this painting. This will be an abstract, not realistic, but it will be using the idea of the flower. The first thing I noticed about the Chalcola products, or Chalcola, Chalk, I guess, how do you say it? I mean, Chalcola is the wonderful description of the types of paints that are in the box. Can you see this? They have wonderful assortment of colors from the primaries, the yellows, the reds, the blues, the greens, from which we can mix colors. And then they have included multiple colors that they have mixed for us from Viridian Green. Wow, is that exciting? Rose Matter. Oh, this one is exciting. Rose and vermilion red. So let's explore the box and see what's in it. Oh, this is very fun. Uh, there are 32 different tubes of paint in the Chal Cola box. And you'll see that they're really easily identified by their name and the color. I like that. So let's look at one of the paints. Here we have a vermilion red and a gold. I'm gonna be mixing these directly on the canvas and as well as mixing them on my palette. The first thing I noticed is how really nicely they come out. This is a beautiful color. This is the gold. So we're just going to be creating a wonderful painting of our flowers using these paints. Um, I'm going to just quickly put in a few different colors, the yellow, well, there we go, it looks really great, it's a nice blending, the colors are still very vibrant, there's a nice viscosity, meaning fluidity to the product. What I'm looking for is pigment color, how well do the pigments hold up? How strong are they? How vibrant? And how long does it take to dry? So this is going to set up for about 10 minutes. Okay, acrylics are really basically polymer, which is kind of like a plastic. They're different from oil paint and they flow and what makes them wonderful to use is that their drying time is 10 to 12 or 20 minutes. So we're going to sit and let this dry and then we're going to experiment by adding some other colors and think about the flowers that we saw and what colors we want to add from here. Okay, remember those flowers that I shot that were like beautiful daisies with the orange and the wonderful colors to them? Normally I mix them on my palette but here, so that you can see them, I'm gonna mix them on here. This is a, col a color called yellow ochre. Like the way that it flows. And this one is called Indian yellow. Ooh, I love that name. So we're gonna add a little bit of Indian yellow. 
What I want to do here is to see how they blend, how the color meets and blends. So all I'm doing here is creating some wonderful shapes that's kind of like those beautiful, um, I kind of guess they're like sort of daisy colors that were kind of yellow. I'm just going to fl flow that here. And then I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to show you a wonderful thing that happens with acrylics that will allow us to put some glazes over the top and create some other colors. Hey, this is really fun. They're looking really good. I like Chalcola. Hey, I wish I knew how to pronounce it. Chalcola colors. Yellow ochre and Indian yellow. Uh, I'm going to be exploring their products. They're great little tubes. There's 32 uh, tubes of color. I'm going to be mixing some yellow, some blue, some red, and we'll see the combinations. Earlier we uh, mixed some colors to see the flow and the mixing of them. So for fun we're going to put some yellow some red and some blue. I laid down one color that I mixed with gold and Indian yellow and in a moment we're going to be doing some glazes. But first, let's see what we get just when we mix two colors together. Here's a little yellow and a little blue and we get a beautiful nice green. Lovely color. I like to put paints in one or two or three areas on my canvas. And since I'm going to be painting flowers, I wanted to put some areas of green uh, that would imply the leaves or the structures. So that's all I'm doing here, is applying some nice color shapes. If you take a little bit of the complement of uh, red, and add it together, it's going to mix and add some darker tones. Notice how you can make some nice darker tones here, and nice blending. This seems to be working quite well and mixing quite well. I'm pleased. When you mix a complement of color, you're actually looking at a color wheel and determining what color sits directly across on the color wheel. I'm gonna put the color wheel up here so that you can see that for yourself. Now, if we are looking at red on the color wheel, the opposite of red is green. This is a phthalo green that I have Put. This is a really nice, beautiful color here. And I'm going to simply be making some of the two colors together. And if you do that, it'll make a really nice, fuller, darker, almost toning to the brown. So I said I was wanting to add a little area for foliage. So all I'm doing here is making some nice, darker colors with uh, a mixture of red and green. I don't really like to use black a lot until the vi very final end, so I just want some dark colors. I love Joan Mitchell. Joan Mitchell is one of my favorite artists, and she was very painterly, meaning that she just expressed herself very freely. She just let the, the paint flow. This would be the focal point if you divided your canvas into three areas like this. The focal points would be here, here, and here. So I'm going to be concentrating a little bit and helping your eye to go to this area. So we have a contrast of a lighter color and a darker area moving your eye to that area. So all I'm going to be doing now is adding several different colors to explore this wonderful paint. It seems to be working really well. I like it. I like to lay some neutral colors down in my painting which is kind of in the middle range of dark to light. Usually I make my neutrals by mixing black and white. And when you do this, you can tone the paint 
to anywhere between the other. This one happens to be Payne's Gray, which I'm excited to see because Payne's Gray, even though its name is Payne's Gray, it really has a touch of blue. So I'm going to be using some Payne's Gray of the Chocula to try that. But first I'm going to be mixing some black and white values. There's some black and there's some white and there's some Payne's Gray. So if you see, Payne's Gray really actually is almost like a blue tone, which is kind of nice. And now the white, the little black, you can make it as dark or as light as you would like to, from the lightest to the darkest tones. And really makes a nice smooth transition. So I like to make some uh, values, of middle values, and so I will just be mixing some their, their chocula is very strong. It's got a very good intense pigment to their black paint. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to be using some more white to actually tone it down. So these are the things you learn as you explore new paints. But look at that beautiful, creamy, creamy gray. So I'm just gonna be adding some tones of flat color just to help move your eye around. Your eye will move around the canvas based on where you position the paint and also the differences in sizes. Notice these two sizes are about the same. To add more interest, increase the size of one. And that'll make your paint, your composition, much more interesting. Notice how the paint is bleeding through. And I've just had here a little bit of water. And all I'm doing is adding water to see the transparency. And I can make some nice transparent areas here, which are working quite effectively. I'm gonna add a little bit more gray area up here, a little bit lights and darks. And that lovely Payne's gray, which is actually more blue. Really has a nice tone to it. Like I was saying, I'm just creating elements that to me are like the secret gardens I witnessed when I was photographing them in my neighbor's yard. It's really fun to just let your passions go and to create really nice elements. So let's take a break, stand back and see what we want to do next. There are there really are a lot of wonderful color choices in the Chocula paints and I thought, you know, since they sent them, why don't we use a little bit of all of them and see what they look like? So let's just go down the list. This one happens to be flesh tint. So a little flesh tint, a little bit of water. Oh, it mixes nicely. Nice cream color there. Great. This one's a little bit called mauve pale. Mauve pale. Wow, isn't that interesting? I believe I saw a flower um, that had kind of a mauve look to it. Now, if you notice, because the acrylics behind it were wet, when you apply new acrylics on top, they are going to mix together. So one of the things you want to remember as an artist, if, if you want a pure color, you've got to let the paint below dry. But I just want to kind of blend some of this, have a little bit of pure color, and do a little blending. Notice the it's blending with the red here with a little bit of that mauve color. Put a little bit more mauve down here just to carry your eye around. Pick up a little here. That's really lovely. I really, really like that. Let's try a little bit more intense uh, mauve color. This one happens to be ultramarine violet. Wow. You're going to have fun exploring this 32 boxes. I'm not going to pull out every. 32 colors, but I wanted to put a few up to share with you the intensity or the pigment value. What you're looking for in a paint is how strong and how pure the pigments are and how they mix with one another. So let's add a little bit of this purple color. So I'm going to put it in a couple places. I like to put purple next to yellow because the complement of yellow is purple. So why not? I'm going to rinse out my brush really well. Now notice my water has gotten dirty. If you have any kind of color in your water, it's going to pick up a little, but there's not much. So I'm just going to 
Oh, that's really nice white wash. That's a very pretty color. My sister loves violet shades. I tend to be um, more on the, the blue shades. I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint this around the edge. This is a gallery wrap canvas, meaning that the side is uh, one and a half inches thick, and I'm gonna paint around. The reason I'm gonna do that is um, when I send it to the client after they purchase it, they may want to frame it or they immediately might be very excited and wanna hang it. By having a gallery edge, you can actually pl place the painting on the wall and it almost can be in a finished state. So let's put a little bit more of this purple over here. I'm wrapping the, the paint around the canvas. Notice that your eye will move where the colors are. So think about that as you're painting. If you use dark colors, they tend to advance. Light colors tend to recede. Think of the landscape. If you look out in the distance at a landscape, in the landscape, the mountains, for example, kind of look like a pale gray or purple. So the same thing applies when you're doing just a simple um, abstract of a flower garden. If you want your colors to uh, pop forward or backward, it's how you place them against one another. Well, our painting is getting kind of busy looking, and I want to just try a few more colors just to show you the different tones. These are the ones that are in the raw umber, uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, kind of the brownish colors. Uh, they really look like they have a lot of nice, strong pigment value. What I've noticed is the color that's on the outside of the chocula tube is really close to what they are saying the color is. So let me show you this. It's very, very close. It ha tends to be just a little duller, but when it dries, let me show you the difference here of the raw umber. Now, notice if I take and spread out my paint, and then I place it next to the color, you'll see that it is a little darker in tone, but it definitely will lead you in the right direction. So these are some of the things to remember as you're picking up the paint. I'm just adding some nice energy, letting some lines flow. And now I'm gonna step back and I'm really gonna let this dry because I wanna add some nice lighter colors over this so I can start to build up. So now I'm gonna let this dry because if I continue painting, this is wet. And where the wet paint is and you try to mix it, it will pick up the color from behind. So don't get frustrated as an artist. Remember, let it dry. You can get a hair dryer or a blowing instrument to let it dry quicker, but uh, acrylics tend to dry in 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the moisture in uh, your environment. So these are really looking like wonderful products. They're very bright, they're very pure pigments, and I'm really enjoying using them. Okay, the painting's been drying for maybe 30, 40 minutes while I had lunch. And now I want to show you the power of acrylics to be uh, translucent when they're lighter colors. And uh, normally I mix them with a little um, medium, which uh, I didn't want to do in this demo because I wanted to be true to the Chocola products. And they do mix quite well with water. But when you add water to a product, of course it dilutes it. If it gets too transparent, it uh, just, it won't um, have the binder active and it won't attract. But I'm going to show you that if we take, I place some orange and I place some vermilion red, I'm going to uh, see how transparent I can make the colors. And notice I'm running some of the yellow over these other colors and you can still see the color coming through, which is really nice. Notice I can tone the ones that I want and leave the others. I'm going to show you the same thing with the orange, the vermilion. Notice how I can use the acrylics in a transparent way, and you can see the colors coming below. The more water you add, the clearer, of course, it's going to be. 
But notice I can get some nice light, I call this glazing. It's actually just uh, some nice colors coming through, being lighter. And you can even come over the blues and you can add some additional washes. So I want to now lighten up the whole painting and uh, give it some light value. So I'm gonna look for the uh, titanium white, which is right here. And I'm gonna add some nice light values throughout the painting. You can leave it thick like an oil paint. Notice how it's working almost like a, an oil paint would. It's thicker and it's building up areas. So I'm going to do some over here right next to the darker colors. And then I'm going to continue mixing on down. And again, I'm going to carry the paint around the canvas, the gallery edge on the right, which is working really quite effectively. And I'm going to add this over here. And we've got some nice effects going now. And I want to go ahead and take the painting off the painting so that I can actually uh, notice here that I've added some paint around the edge of the gallery rack. So I'm actually just going to take some of this paint. And it's a really nice color darker against the edge of the canvas sometimes really has a nice effect against a wall. So I'm running this gallery edge along the top, as you can see. And I'm also going to add the gallery edge across the bottom. There we are, just simply squeezing the acrylic along the edge and adding this across the bottom. So now I'm just going to put this back on the easel and we'll do the sides in the next step. I'm gonna let this sit out for a second and just let that dry. And then I'm gonna come back and do the other sides. So that's next. Now, as you can see, I have simply painted the edge of this canvas and I've painted the top area as well, as you'll notice here. And I'm just going to add some additional color across the top area running the color a little bit off the sides. And now I'm going to turn the canvas and paint the other side. Let that dry. And I'm going to paint this color. Now, since I have some green coming off, I'm just going to put a little green over here and paint this across the other gallery edge bringing it to the front side so it draws your eye around the canvas. And then I've got some wet colors here that I can carry over to the edge. So there we have the canvas that's painted on all sides. We've got a nice colors going. I'm just going to add some lighter yellows here. Notice I have yellow down here, so I'm just going to add some nice lighter tones up here. I have a lot of beautiful colors coming across the canvas. Now I'm going to step back and see what I want to do next in my abstract secret flower garden. Well, the wonderful thing about acrylics is that you can build up in layers. You can make some layers kind of transparent, allow the color to come through. You can uh, put it on with a palette knife. 
Now that I've looked at the painting, I'm going to add just a couple more dark areas just to make your eye recede. I'm going to put some Mars black, some sap green, some ultramarine violet. This will make your eye kind of go back. So remember, uh, colors can either come forward or recede, as I said earlier. In this case, by putting the dark edge here, it'll make it appear like shadows of foliage. in the painting I put in some uh, things that are I'm trying to think what that's called um, boy I wish I knew the names of flowers uh, a flower with kind of some small purpley bluish petals so I'm going to add a little bit of that just in a couple areas lost it or covered it up in the earlier areas and now I'm going to make what I hope will come out kind of like a little bit of a kind of a soft turquoise I'm going to put a little blue here and I'm going to add just a touch of yellow paints are really nice they just move up really nice here and a little tiny touch of green this happens to be phthalo green and some titanium white. This is kind of fun using the painting to be a palette so that I can show you the colors. There we go, we get kind of like a foam color, foam sea color. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is going to add some light and some brightness to this. And there was a, a flower that had some soft white and soft green and lots of little petals. So I'm going to make kind of a little pink here so I just have it to work with. And I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of blue. And I'm going to mix some white. And I'm going to mix just a touch of yellow. And this is going to be where I can just lay over some really nice soft colors just to kind of brighten up the painting. Touch a little bit kind of pink in it. To me, that kind of looks like those little leaves, those little balls of colors. They were just so nice. They kind of moved in and out into the... Adding just a little mixture as you go. Isn't that fun? Look at how you can just create these wonderful little worlds. I love Bob Ross, how he used to say, there's the sweet little mountain. Well, here we have the sweet little pieces of flowers. I'm going to add just a little bit more white. Can't, huh? Can't find the white, so I'll use the cream. Love these chocolate paints. Remember how those um, flowers kind of just clustered in little areas? The light would be hitting different leaves. By layering and building up, you can create wonderful little worlds of color.
and it's all your imagination. You've been stimulated by the, the walk and by seeing the flowers growing, but now it's your world and you can create whatever you wanted. Remember those wonderful little flowers that were kind of like the orange uh, ones? So I'm gonna put a little bit of those feelings. just be growing anywhere don't have to really be particular you're just creating a feeling of the flowers let's carry a little bit of that color around we have a nice little combination of blues and grays and greens I like to call this a magic mud I'm just mixing all those together and it's creating a really pretty kind of nice tone run a little few of these colors as they would come down they'd be in the shadows and you'd want to darken them up a little bit so I'm going to add just a smidge of green down here to darken them as we're coming down in the shadows Few of them catching the light. Now, remember those um, nice feathery feather um, colors that were the flowers that kind of like um, I don't know, kind of like spider legs. So I'm going to add a few of those fun spider legs in now. Let your layers come through. How does your garden grow? some of this color down there how we're looking I better step back and turn the camera on to black and white and really look at the values just to make sure one more time but I think I'm gonna to have to do just a little bit more lighter areas so since I see that right now I'm just going to add some light tones add some light tones here There we go. This is really coming nicely. Making the sizes a little bit bigger coming forward. It'll move your eye forward. Final little touch up down here just to make sure I've got a little bit of this orange color coming in here. Just can't even see what it is, but it's sitting off here. Maybe a little piece of it sitting off over here. There, isn't that fun? Chalk holder paints, you ought to check them out. They're really fun. Great viscosity, great colors, a lot of different choices for you. Uh, please uh, go to their site, look at the different products. I hope they send me some markers and I'll experiment with those as well. I have to give a big thumbs up for Chocola. I guess it's kind of like Ola, Chocola Paints. It sure has been a pleasure sharing this with you today. And let's step back and look and see how we like this painting. Well, I've taken a little bit of green, phthalo green, a little bit of uh, black, Mars black, I'm going to thin this down and use my little pointy brush, and I'm going to just make a few making sure they kind of touch over here. Kind of implying that 
I've got things growing. I really like to add some darker colors just for effect. So I'm just going to put some of these darker colors here. Use up the rest of my paint. Let the movement kind of speak for itself. That feels really good. And I think for the final thing, I'm going to take a little bit of cream and a soft amount of Naples yellow and a little bit of titanium white. And I'm going to make a nice soft color. I'm going to make a nice soft color. really make this abstract. I'm going to connect this off the side. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, for the final part, I think I'm going to sign this Sherry. I've used multiple names in my career. Um, my whole name is Cheryl Lynn Carla Johnson. My Finnish name is Cheryl Bril Yarebe. Uh, Sometimes I sign them Sherry, sometimes I sign them Cheryl, sometimes I share, sign them Cheryl Lynn. But for fun, I'm going to sign this Sherry. There. That's great. Okay. I hope you've had a great time. Uh, painting is about passion and a, about exploring your emotions. Acrylic paints are wonderful because you can just build up layer after layer and if you don't like it you can cover it up. So that's the beauty of it. Thank you Chalk Cola for this experience and thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you have a great day and please pursue your passion and have more joy every day. This is Cheryl Johnson, Art Lessons Now, and this is our Master Art Class.